In 62, Brazil arrived as favourites. The rest of the world had discovered us in 58. So we arrived in Chile as world champions. But we had the same staff, the same mentality and the same ability. The player who really stood out in that tournament was Manny Garincha. He was just out of this world for us. And he took on the role of leader of that team. An injury to Pelé in their second game meant that Brazil were without their recognised star for most of the tournament. Suddenly, Garincha could step out of his more celebrated teammate's shadow. He realised in that World Cup that now he was the principal actor. Now he thought, I'm not just a bit part player, I'm the star. In that World Cup, Garincha scored from a free kick, he dribbled as always, he scored with his head, he even scored with his left foot. He was inspired in that World Cup. I think a saint was watching over him. He carried Brazil by himself. Garincha had never been a leader in his career. He never paid attention to tactics and coaches saw no point in trying to teach him. He played, he enjoyed himself, and he went home. But in 1962, he became Brazil's leader and inspiration. He did things with the ball. God, he even scored with his left foot. He practically carried the team on his back. He took the responsibility in every game. He did things that I'd never seen him do at Botafogo. In the quarterfinals, England were ripped apart by Garincha's pace, tricks and his newfound eye for goal. He scored twice in a 3-1 win. He was phenomenal against England and they were a good team. To have stopped Garincha, they would have needed a machine gun. Fortunately, they didn't have one. Hosts Chile were on the receiving end of another virtuoso display in Brazil's semi-final. Again he scored twice. Brazil were now entirely dependent on their mercurial winger. I always say this. I know of only two players who have single-handedly won a World Cup. Garincha in 62 and Maradona in Mexico 86. Despite being sent off at the end of that semi-final, he earned a last-minute reprieve to play a starring role in the final against Czechoslovakia. Brazil won 3-1 to retain their crown. Garincha was voted the player of the tournament. His stock had never been higher. Back in Rio, life only got better. He helped Botafogo to a Rio State final win with a performance that many claimed to be the greatest in his career. But just as he appeared to have reached his peak, things were about to take a drastic downturn. Garincha's carefree life was beginning to catch up with him. From that game on, Garincha was never the same again. His chaotic personal life didn't help. Since 1961, he'd been involved in a tempestuous affair with bossa nova singer Elsa Suarez. The affair had been revealed and the couple were vilified. The hero of 1962 had now turned public villain. More worryingly, though, he was struggling on the pitch. Garincha had succumbed to a long-term knee injury from which he would never truly recover. When he started to become the star of the team, he was contracted by Botafogo to play more. They had to play him in at least every other game. And so the fact that he wasn't a natural athlete meant that he was given various treatments and injections to stay fit, and that finished him off. He had arthritis because of the problems with his legs. 
por um lado e o corpo por outro. And it reached a level where it really began to hurt and he just couldn't fight it anymore. He didn't have that same explosiveness because of the hurt. There had to come a time when he just had to stop. It wasn't just the injuries. His drinking was now beginning to spiral out of control. His childlike and carefree naivety had been endearing in the past. Now it was leading to his downfall. Grincha right until the end of his life was naive. If he met nice people, he'd go off with them. If he met not so nice people, he'd go off with them too. Everything was spontaneous, not given any thought. Grincha, let's go to church, and he'd go. Grincha, let's go drinking, and he'd go. And unfortunately, he was surrounded by a lot of people who made him do that. But there was still a place for Garincha in Brazil's 1966 World Cup squad. With a military dictatorship now in power, his call-up was a political decision. The government wanted its heroes from 58 and 62 to play. Sixty-six was more political. We had to take players who'd been champions in 58 and 62, as both our president and president of FIFA wanted a celebratory atmosphere like before. I was 36. How could I really play? It was a joke. The same could have been said for Garincha. This wasn't the same player who'd been voted player of the tournament in 1962. He'd been considered surplus to requirements of Botafogo and offloaded the year before. He was now overweight and out of shape. He was only half the player in the 66 World Cup, as he was very much coming to the end of his career. But it was still Garincha. As far as I'm concerned, what he was able to do on the pitch, no one has done since. He could still produce moments of genius, though. A thundering free kick in the opening game against Bulgaria was testament to that. But his touch and speed had deserted him. Defeat in the next game against Hungary was his first in the Brazil shirt. He would never play for his country again. Garincha, the footballer, was finished. He wasn't in the right condition to be playing for the national team. His knee was finished by that point. He still played, but he shouldn't really have been there. He wasn't the same Garincha that we'd all seen before. He was now a totally different player. He was now a pale imitation of his former self. No longer drinking for pleasure, Garincha stumbled from one alcoholic stupor to the next as he attempted to revive his career at various clubs. But his body could no longer cope with the physical stress of professional football. He'd lost his way, but while he was a footballer, he'd have a few beers after the game, and it wasn't an issue. He never gave us any problems at all. It was only once he stopped playing that the problems began because he couldn't sweat out all the alcohol and he started suffering from things that he hadn't suffered from before and so all this inevitably hit him hard and brought him down and depression began to sink in. Depression soon gave way to suicidal thoughts. In 1969 he suffered a car crash that instantly killed his mother-in-law who was sat in the passenger seat. Garincha blamed himself and tried to take his own life twice. The Brazilian FA should have shown a lot more concern because of what he did. Given what he did for Brazil and what he represented, he deserved a lot more and he didn't get it. He died with practically nothing. On January the 20th, 1983, Garincha died, aged 49, of cirrhosis of the liver. In the previous 12 months, he'd been admitted to hospital eight times. Up until his death, his body would violently reject anything that wasn't alcoholic. Brazil finally mourned its tragic hero, Mane Garincha, joy of the people. I'll never see a player like him again. Whoever saw him got lucky. It's such a shame that Grinch's life ended the way it did. He didn't deserve that end because I'm telling you, he was a genius. 
Everyone else was a great player, but not a genius. He was an extraordinary guy, a great teammate and a great friend whenever you needed him. I just hope God has given Manigarincha a good place up there. He was out of this world.